understand that when I'm saying that. I love you all very much, and I sincerely mean that, even though I don't know many of you. When I started teaching at Colter Stockton College, I was 23 years old, fresh out of graduate school, and I have now been on this campus doing one thing or another, and you'll hear about some of them, for 67 years. I don't think I don't think anyone will ever surpass my record for being on the campus. Well, if you add those two together, you get my age. <laughs> so uh, today I am 90 and three months old. And I thank God that he's got me this far. But I want you to know my whole life, well, at least 67 years of it, has been college students. And I love college students. And I hope you will see that as we progress. Let me give you a quick rundown. Uh, Mohammed, why don't you put, ah, oh, it's up there. The first question is, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I was born in Savannah, Georgia. By the way, anybody here from Georgia? Okay. I was born in Savannah, Georgia on the ocean. And then we, when I was just a child, we moved to Atlanta. So I claim Atlanta as home. Um, I, my senior year in high school, very quickly, my senior year in high school was 1950, 51. And no one here from Atlanta, Georgia, right? Okay, I won't tell you anything about the high school. Um, I went to Lynchburg College, but I've got to tell you how I got there. Most of my things tonight are going to have a moral to them. How did I get from Atlanta, Georgia to Lynchburg College to go to college? Okay. My mother went to a women's meeting one day at the Christian Church in Atlanta, <laughs> Georgia, and the speaker was the assistant to the president at Lynchburg College in Lynchburg, Virginia. And she was so impressed with his lecture on higher education at a small church-related liberal arts college. And so she said to him after the talk, she said, Dr. Helsebeck, do you have to get to a plane real quickly or something, or can you come to my house and talk to my son about what you've just talked about in small church-related liberal arts <coughs> colleges? Now, mind you, in Atlanta, I live just down the road, literally, just down the road from Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech. I was interested in chemistry, and I was on my way applying to Georgia Tech right down the road. Okay, Dr. Helsebeck comes home with my mother from this meeting at the church, and they're sitting in the living room. Picture this, I walk in, black backpack over my shoulder, I walk in and there's some strange man in my living room with my mother. <laughs> Dr. Fred Helsebeck, he says, by the way, he was assistant to the president at Lynchburg College in Lynchburg, Virginia. Mother says, Doc, this is Dr. Helsebeck from Lynchburg College. I want him to tell you about it. When he finished, there was no question in my mind that I was going anywhere but Lynchburg College in Lynchburg, Virginia. So I told Georgia Tech, I'm sorry, I'm not coming. So I went to Lynchburg College in Lynchburg, Virginia. That's how I got there. I was there 51, 52, 52, 53, 53, 54, 54. I was a chemistry major and a mathematics minor. Um, after that, I applied to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia to do my master's work in chemistry. And this was very interesting. Uh, I'm, at, I'm in, at Emory doing the 1955-56 uh, year when the secretary from the chemistry department comes down to my research lab and says, you have a long distance phone call. I go, what? On that phone was Dr. Fred Elsebeck from Lynchburg College, where I went to college, the assistant to the president, the one who sat in my living room with my mother. And he says, quote, John, would you like to begin your chemistry, your teaching at Culver Stockton College? And I go, Huh? <laughs> I, I, I wasn't even aware of Culver Stockton College. I had no 
I did not know of Culver Stockton College. I never applied for a position at Culver Stockton College. I never wrote a resume for Culver Stockton College. I never had a job interview for Culver Stockton College. Dr. Fred Elsebeck simply said, I want you at Culver Stockton College. I bet you there's not another professor in the nation that can say that, that they did nothing to apply. He was just were, were, were summoned here. Anyway, so I said, I don't know whether I want to go to Culver Stockton or not, but I said, what do you have to do with Culver Stockton? You're the assistant to the president at, Col at Lynchburg College in Virginia. He said, not anymore. I'm the president of Culver Stockton College. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, okay. So um, during this first year at, at, at Emory University, I got the telephone call from Dr. Fred Elsebeck. He wanted me here for the 1956-57 school year, but I said, I can't be there for all of that. I said, I'm not finished with my master's. I, I need another semester. He said, take it, I'll fill in. So I did not get here in 1956. I didn't get to Culver until the second semester. Listen carefully to this. I didn't get here until the second semester of the 56-57 school year. Now, can you imagine you were taking chemistry in 56-57, and you had two industrial chemists. Uh, can you go up? Yes. Okay. There were two industrial chemists. There was Everett Anderson from Gardner Denver and Albert Kirk from Mormon Manufacturing. Anybody know these two gentlemen? They're passed away now, but they, okay. They filled in for me before I ever was here. So get this. Imagine yourself in chemistry having these two gentlemen from Quincy to drive over and teach all the labs and classes, and then Brodman appears on the scene second semester. Uh, they tell me I was tough as nails, and I guess I was compared to these gentlemen. I have a feeling it was a field day in this situation. And so those students in the 56-57 school year really had an experience. They had these two gentlemen first semester and me second semester. Um, so uh, I really started to see it seen in the second semester of the 56-57. Now, I don't know whether you're aware or not, you men, are you familiar with what's called the selective service system we used to have in the United States of America where when you were 18, you registered with your draft board to be in the draft situation. You could be yanked at any time and sent into the United States Army. So I was, of course, registered in my Georgia draft board, and they were saying, okay, uh, you've been to four years of college. Well, get this. When you graduate from high school, you go into the draft situation. It's, it's not happening now. The draft is not operating now, but we may have it again, I don't know. Uh, but the point is, I was deferred by my draft board in Georgia to go to Lynchburg College. One deferment, two deferments, three deferments, four deferments, five deferments, six deferments, deferments, and then they said, okay, that's it. You are going to be drafted. And I said to myself, oh my. I am the chemistry department. So what do we do? So I don't know why I did this. I, I, I'm still shocked at it. I got on an airplane. I made an appointment. I got on an airplane and went to Atlanta, Georgia, had an appointment with the director of selective service to talk to him about what can I do? And so I walked into this swank office in the Capitol building in Atlanta, Georgia, shaking like a leaf. And I told him my situation. And I said, is there any way that I can serve my nation? I know this was a stupid question. Is there <laughs> any way I can serve my nation and remain professor of chemistry at Culver Stockton College? And he said, well, yes, there is. I go, what? <laughs> he said, Congress just passed the Selective Service Bill. You can, you can enlist in any of the services, Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, 
for seven years, no, eight years, eight years, you go immediately to basic training, and then for seven and three quarter years, basic training is three months, for seven and three quarter years, we can yank you out of your job anytime and in 24 hours send you anywhere in the world if they need a chemist. I go, I'll take it. So I enlisted in the United States Air Force for eight years. And so at the end of the 56, 57 split school year, I went to Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas for three months. Get this, school, the 57, 58 school year ended and I had to immediately pack up and get to Lackland Air Force Base for my three months of basic training. I had final exams stacked that high to grade. I took them with me. Get this. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was drilling and all the hassle you put up with. By the way, I learned some language at Lackland. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk that way at all. If you ever hear me talk that way, I'll give you a $100 bill. That's not in my vocabulary. But I learned some things at Lackland I really didn't want to learn. But anyway, so I had to immediately leave Culver Stockton to get to Lackland, taking the finals with me. So when did I get to grade them? On Saturdays and Sundays when we did not have activities that had to do with being in the Air Force. The poor students that were students in 1956, 57, um, uh, well, 57, 58, uh, they had to wait forever to get their final chemistry grade. It was very bad, but I just had no choice. Um, okay, so, to answer the question, how did I get from Atlanta, Georgia to Canton, Missouri, uh, let me backtrack and tell you about that. Um, you know how I got to Lynchburg College, I told you that. Um, so, Fred Helsebeck, who was in my mother's living room and talked me into going to Lynchburg College, assistant to the president was there, he of course came to Culver and got me here. All right. Um, where am I going with this? Okay, he got me here and let me see. I have the notes on, uh, on the screen if you would like, Dr. Bell. Okay, no, this is fine. Let me look at my notes here. I want to be sure. Okay, you got to never go over to resume, resume and all that stuff. All right, I got here and he, of course, uh, excuse me, I've lost track of, track of things here. Um, no, 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 hold on. Okay, where, where was I? What was the last thing I was talking about? Uh, you, you were backtracking to how you got to Culver Stockton. Let's go to Culver Stockton from Dr. Helsenbeck. Right. Okay. Um, we didn't finish the story about Air Force. The you know, I got to Lackland and we've done that. Okay. Oh, uh, the honorable district. Okay, let's get back to my notes up here. Um, the Air Force saga. Okay, you got that. Is, is that showing up there, Mom? Yes, the Air sir. Force yes, saga? right there. Yes. Okay, let's move on to positions then at Culver Stockton College. Okay. I've been professor of chemistry, chairman of the Division of Natural Sciences, part time administrative assistant to President Ruling. I retired somewhat early, but they said, before you get out of here, we're going to have a president for three years. We want you to be his assistant. So I was part-time administrative assistant to the president. I've been a volunteer tutor ever since I retired in chemistry, volunteer personal counselor, and I have loved that. Students have come to me with all kinds of personal problems. They trust me. We've had some very serious talks. I've made some wonderful friends. I love my personal counseling. I've been big brother to several international students. Are there any international students here tonight? Raise your hand if you are, if you're an international student. What nation? India. India. I have enjoyed this more than, I had four in particular that I really, really got very close to and had a wonderful time with. From Mauritius, when you go home, look up the island nation of Mauritius. 
It's about this big, and it sits in the middle of the ocean. And I'm going, how in heaven's name did you get here? Anyway, I, I had four that really, really stood out. Uh, Mauritius, one from Spain, one from Jordan, and one from Germany. Uh, so welcome. I admire what you're doing. I could not do what you do. Are you a freshman? Uh, are you at Culver or which university? Culver. At Culver. She's my student. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Well, welcome. I admire you greatly. Okay. Um, let me tell you about activities here at Culver Stockton. Of course, I was a professor of chemistry uh, for many years. I was chairman of the Division of Natural Sciences. I was part-time administrative assistant to President Ruling, as I mentioned. Volunteer tutor, volunteer personal counselor, big brother to several of our international students. I began the first annual science fair, and it's still going. What, what number are we up to this year? 63. This year 63. Maybe. Yes. I started the science fair 63 years ago. Um, yes. And also, I started the first annual bloodmobile on the campus, which was the first bloodmobile in Lewis County. And now we have several bloodmobiles on campus and several bloodmobiles in Lewis County. So I was very, very proud of that. Um, in the city of Canton, I have been uh, at the Canton Christian Church, everything you can think of, storyteller during the Sunday school, deacon, elder, sang in the church choir. Uh, I, I don't know, I've, I've, I've had church up to here. I love my church and I've worked very hard in it. I've been on the Canton Public Library Board of Directors. I was Cub Master for Cub Scout Pac 174 here in Canton. That was one of the joys of my life. I still have in my mind, at one time I had 40, 40 of these little boys in my pack. Picture homecoming, guys. Picture Culver homecoming. Picture 40 boys, four abreast, four, 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 10 deep. Big American flag out front held by a Boy Scout and all 40 boys carrying little red, little American flags. They brought tears to the homecoming people here. But my years as Cub Master were the greatest. Um, wherever, I've lost track of where I was here. I've lost my notes again. Um, I know, but I gotta find them here on my thing. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, here we are. Uh, Cub Scout Pack, Can Board of Aldermen, so I was a politician a while. Um, that was really interesting, particularly when your phone rings and somebody calls up and just cusses you out. And they usually were drunk, and I would tell this one man, don't you ever call me again unless you're sober. Uh, Can Council of Churches, that was, that was great. All the churches in Can cooperated together and did things together. And I was big brother to several Lewis County youngsters, and that was a real joy to, to help some youngsters that were in trouble. Okay, let's um, shift gears here. I want to talk about the appearance of a young man at Culver Stockton College <laughs> by the name of Scott LeWaiters, who's sitting right here for anyone who doesn't know <laughs> Scott LeWaiters. Um, here's how that worked out. Um, From the screen in, in the old days, I don't know whether we still do this or not, anybody, but the old days, the division chairs at Culver Stockton and members of the admissions department would go to St. Louis, go to Kansas City, all these big cities, and work with students that are just graduating from high school and getting ready to go to Culver Stockton and sign them up for their classes during the summer prior to them getting here. Great, great idea. Okay, so in the summer of um, 1985, I went to St. Louis with the division chairs. I was chairman of the science division. And in walks a young man up to my table by the name of Scott Lewis. Um Tremendous personality. 
I just fell in love with him immediately. And he said, I'm going to be a chemistry major and a math major at Culver Stockton. And I signed him up. And he became my teaching assistant, my TA, his sophomore year. Uh, the way I did that, I always waited to the end of a freshman year to see who was my outstanding freshman in chemistry and then asked them, did they want to be my teaching assistant? Now, mind you, my entire time at Culver, you're not going to believe this, and I don't even believe it. <laughs> my entire time at Culver, I was the entire chemistry department. I had no help. I taught all of the classes in an alternating basis, so we made it. So my TA became very important to me. I had to know they were going to do their job, have everything ready for the lab and whatever. I had no help whatsoever except my TA. Well, he became my TA, and he was one of the most incredible TAs that you could ever, ever hope to have. Um, I want to tell you about, well, he majored in chemistry and mathematics and became my teaching assistant in his sophomore year for three years. So he was my TA for sophomore, junior, and senior years. Uh, I want to tell you how good he was at protecting his students. I would give a pre-lab lecture and tell them exactly what to do, and no one could ever say they didn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be part of the story. So one day I lectured to the students. Y'all don't even know about this. This is called a thistle tube. And back in the dark ages, we didn't have ground glass equipment. And we had to put thistle tubes through rubber stoppers. Well, here's how you don't do it. <laughs> you don't hold a thistle tube. Oh, by the way, they are used for introducing, I think I said, liquids into your reaction. You don't hold it by the thistle end and have the stopper down here and start shoving over this. It's going to break. So I told the students in the pre-lab lecture over and over, you take the thistle tube and you hold it right above the stopper, preferably with a piece of cloth over there too, and you gently, you wet the stopper with water, and you gently push it through. Well, Scott Lewaters is at one end of the lab, and Sam, I don't know, I'll call him Sam, Sam was at the other end. <laughs> And he saw Sam doing this. You remember this? Yeah. And he knew he couldn't get over there in time to stop Sam from demolishing his hand. So I can still hear his voice reverberating on the campus. He yelled, Sam, stop! <laughs> and of course, Sam froze. And by the time he got over there, and he told Sam what he was doing. <laughs> But he also is screaming as he walks over there, didn't you hear what Dr. Brugman said? <laughs> he was without a doubt the best TA you could ever have. And the thistle tube incident really shows it uh, to a perfect degree. Um, okay, let's Not see here. <laughs> All right. More about him. I've got to tell a couple of stories that are very important. He played football for three seasons. Why not four? He played football in high school. He loved it. He came here and he played for three seasons and then told the coach, I can't do this anymore. And here's the reason. He was a chemistry major and a math major. And he wanted to do his best academically and he knew he could not do it and continue playing football. It just, it was too much. I, I admire him so much for that because few students I have seen have had guts enough to say, I can't do all of this. And your lessons better come first, people. Your lessons better come first. It's a jungle out there and you're gonna be in competition with other folks. Do your lessons first. More about that in a minute. But that's why he played three years of football and not four. He personally knew he had to give it up because he was a chemistry major and a math major. Uh, also, he told me his plans.
for the future. I said, what are your plans for the future? And he said, I'm going to go to graduate school. I think I'm already told this tonight. Get my degree and come back here and replace you. <laughs> that is 100% true, yes. And I said, true. I said, go for it. <laughs> so he went to graduate school. He got his doctoral degree. And lo and behold, a position opened at Quincy College then, now Quincy University, but a position opened at Quincy College in Quincy, Illinois, in the chemistry department, and he applied for it, and he got it. And this was perfect because his church was a Catholic church, Quincy College was a Catholic, Catholic college. It couldn't be more beautiful. I was so happy that I wasn't replaced <laughs> and that he was where he was and where he is. This young man, and he's young compared to me. I don't care what you think. He's a child compared to me. I admire him more than you have. You possibly could know for what he's done in his life, the decisions he's made in his life, very mature decisions. The reason why I got the job at Quincy University is because of his recommendation. Uh, I had a lot of people comment about that's the best recommendation I've ever read. So you. you had a lot to do with me getting that job. Well, I hope so. I well, hope he wrote so. it because he didn't want you to come here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's right. I didn't want you to come that's here. Right. To the <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let's go to word of the wise. Okay. Please listen to what I'm going to say. There is a study formula in academe that says the minimum, dark letters, the minimum hours of study per week per course is the credit hours times three. So if you're taking organic chemistry, for example, getting ready to go to medical school or whatever, it's a four-hour course times three is 12 hours of study per week minimum. Now, I want you to go home tonight and think about this. If you're not doing 12 hours minimum, or if it's a three-hour course and whatever, three times three is nine, nine hours minimum. If you're not doing that minimum, then you're cheating yourself tremendously. Don't do that. Don't do that. You are here to get an education. Yes, you're here for other things too, social things and whatever, play football or whatever, but you better study the minimum. And particularly you folks in science better do this or you're just not going to make it in certain areas. More about that in just a minute. Um, okay, a word about the MCAT exam. If you're going into medicine, dentistry, pharmaceutical, whatever, a whole bunch of things, you're going to have to take the medical, medical college admission test, MCAT, MCAT. That how many are going into something where you're going to have to take the MCAT? Okay. You had better study, 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 and also watch how you read English and interpret English and understand English. The MCAT exam now has become a bear. They've made it very difficult because so many people are applying to medical school. They've got to weed you out before you ever get there. I didn't bring an exam, a sample question this year like I have before and when I visited some of Dr. Obamari's classes. But here is a problem on the MCAT. There are four answers given. Two of them are correct. What? How do you choose? But one of them may have an adjective in front of a noun that says <coughs> very whatever, or sometimes whatever, or this has been a very difficult thing for our international students. I had a young man from Jordan Brilliant, brilliant. I've never seen a student so brilliant. He flunked the, well, he didn't flunk it, but he didn't make the grade to get into where he wanted to get because 
he didn't understand the English language. I'm warning you, if you're going into any area where you have to take the MCAT, you better, better know your subject matter and a little bit about the English language because they are trying to weed you out. Medical schools are getting thousands and thousands of applications and they've got to weed it down to several hundred. So it is very, very difficult. Just a warning. So I hope you will do that study formula and I hope you will think about getting ready for the MCAT exam. Um, okay. Words of wisdom. I assume you've heard the expression, pass it on. People have done wonderful things for you as you've been growing up, and now you need to pass it on to make our society worthwhile. Let me tell you the greatest pass it on thing that ever happened to me. I couldn't believe this. I'm traveling from Can, Missouri to Tybee Island, Georgia for a vacation, and I stop in Dalton, Georgia at a motel. I have never been in Dalton, Georgia in my life until that evening. I go to the Crackle Barrel restaurant across the street and I eat dinner. And when I finish dinner, I say to the waitress, may I have my bill please? And she said, are you ready for this? Your meal has been paid for. I go, what? I said, what are you talking about? Who paid my meal? A pass it on person. I go, you're kidding me. So somebody in that restaurant watched me eat my meal, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I look sad, I, I don't know. <laughs> but they paid my meal and left. Try to remember to pass it on to make the world a better place. This world right now, I'm not going into this, but this world right now is so messed up, I apologize to you for what you're growing up in. I don't know why mankind can't live with mankind in peace and love each other. I, I don't understand. Stop Sermon John. But, but, okay. <laughs> um, if you are unable to say something nice or say something helpful, then please don't say anything at all. I mean, why hurt people? Try to help people. All of us need help in some way. Do your best to do that. Do say, do say, please, thank you, I'm sorry, and I love you. By all means, particularly you gentlemen, Say, I love you to your children while giving them a big hug. Some men cannot hug their babies and little children and say, I love you for some reason. Men, do it. Hug your children and look them in the eyes while you are hugging them and say, I love you. It will make all the difference in the world. Well, I want to thank you for your attention to this old man. I love you very much, and I mean that dearly. I really do. My very best wishes to each of you. If I'm able to help you in any way, if you're at Culver, please contact Dr. Elba Maui. If you're at Quincy University, contact Dr. Williams, and they will provide you with my email address, and we'll get together somehow. I probably will have to have you come over here from Quincy University, and we'll have lunch, dinner at Primo's Restaurant. But if I can help you by talking to you, by the way, I'm brutal. If you come talk to me, if I, will, I, I won't mince any words. Uh, but if I can help anybody, you better hurry because I'm 90 and I'm not going to be around very long. <laughs> I have, a, I have a question. No, no, Dr. Broden. He's not done yet. Oh, not done. Are you, you going to talk about your theology decision? The scholarship you got oh, in theology, I and no, no, I, 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 that. I okay. love that story. That's very talk to awesome. What are, you referring to, <laughs> what are you referring to? While I was in college, I had so many roads I could take. I mean, I I, I thought about being a, a pulpit minister, and I thought about the things I could do with chemistry, and so I applied for 
a, a national, it was called the Rockefeller Theological Scholarship Competition. And I had to go from Lynchburg College to Atlanta, Georgia, and be interviewed by this very illustrious committee of theologians from all over these theology places in, in, in the United States. I won. <laughs> so I could have gone to any theological school in the nation totally free. And I thought about it a long time, and I, I'm not sure. I, I think the reason I did not accept it was because I thought, if I'm a minister, people are going to expect me to say some things I'm going to say. But I think maybe I can have more influence on my fellow man if a chemist says those. Because no one is expecting that to come out the mouth of a chemist. Is that what you're referring yes, to? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. And you uh, were going to go to medical school, too, maybe. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask. All right. Yes. All right. I was also interested in medicine, so I applied to the Medical College of Georgia and were accepted. Get this, I'm a senior at Lynchburg College with a Rockefeller scholarship to any theological school I wanted to go to, admission to the Medical College of, of the College of Georgia, and to Emory University with a scholarship to be there. I'm going, jeez. So I cannot tell you exactly why. I, I guess I wasn't a minister, I think I said, because people would would say he's got to say that he's a minister, so I rule that out. I'm not sure why I didn't go to medical school, but anyway, I had all three, so picture that, seniors. I'm getting ready to leave Lynchburg College, and I have three roads I can take. I was really frustrated for a while. Um, spent a lot of time in prayer. Okay. Um, Okay, there's something called the Brodman Scholarship in Chemistry that was set up by some of my majors, most of my majors, several years ago. And uh, I want to thank this section of the American Chemical Society because they made a major donation to this Brodman Scholarship. So I really thank all the members of the Quincy uh, Section. Not um, Quincy. It's Mark not Quincy. Twain. Mark Twain. Thank yes, you. Thank we did change your name. Uh, the, the current recipient, the 2020, 23, 24 recipient is Jacob Tharp. Jacob, where are you? There's the current recipient right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming. I was taking your scholarship away. From you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, one brief word about our section. I'm proud to say that this section of the American Chemical Society was founded on this campus just a, two or three years before I got here. And it was originally called the Canton, Missouri section of the American Chemical Society. Some years went by, oh, we, we had our, our organization